Hey everyone, in this lesson we are going to see how we can plot arrays in MATLAB. If we have two arrays of the same length, then we can plot them relative to each other using the plot function. Plot is a predefined MATLAB function where the first argument is the array that we will set on the x-axis and the second argument is the array that we set on the y-axis. For instance, given this following interface where we have the data matrix, we have this sequence of arrays and this information, let's create a graph with boundaries, which is one array that we have here, and energy one, which is another array that we have in here. And keep in mind that boundaries needs to be on the x-axis and energy 1 on the y-axis. So, given this interface that we have, let's define this plot. Keep in mind that we need to set the boundaries array to be on the x-axis and the energy 1 on the y-axis. So let's just plot this with the plot function. Now we specify the array on the x-axis, in this case it's boundaries, so we just write boundaries. Then we specify the array on the y-axis, which is energy 1. So we just say here, energy 1, like that. So now, when we run this, we see that we have this plot, where here we have the intervals for boundaries, which is the x, and then here we have the interval for the y-axis, which is energy 1. Let's continue. Something very interesting is that the plot function also accepts additional information that we can give. For instance, we can set the color of the graph, the line style, and also the marker style with different symbols. For instance, if we write plot, here we write the two arrays on the x-axis and the y-axis, and then we write r, these two hyphens, and then the o, this means that we render the plot with a red line, so first we specify the color, then we specify the line style, which is a sequence of dashes, with these two dashes, and then we specify with the O that we want a circle as a marker style. You can learn a lot more about the available symbols on plotting in the line specification documentation. This can be available online at the MATLAB website. Now, here we have a brief workout. We need to plot the array energy 2 against the boundaries. And also, we need to specify the color. We will use the, the red with the R. And also, it needs to be done with a star marker. So, we will use the asterisk and with no line. So, let's now plot this. We just write plot. Okay, let's just add here a section break. And we just write plot with the boundaries x-axis and here energy 2 as the y-axis and also we need to specify the color red and the star markers so here we just add the third argument which is this specification so we write r for the color and this asterisk for the marker and keep in mind that we are not using the any thing of lines because we are not here inserting any lines remember that when you have a specification in the third argument, the first element is the color, then it is the line style, and then it is the marker style. If you don't write anything in the line style, then it's the same as having no line at all, which is basically what they're asking for in this problem. Okay, So we just do not include any line, we just include a marker, so no line is included in this plot. So let's run this, and as we see, we have here the graph below, the color is red, and here we have the notation, okay? And we are not using any line at all. Now notice that each plot command that we executed has created a separate plot, right? We first have uh, the first plot that we have used, okay, for this command, and then we have below another plot that we use this command, okay? In MATLAB, uh, there is the possibility that we can plot graphs inside the same graph, okay? 
So to plot one line on top of another, we can use the hold on command to hold the previous plot while another line is added. So now we just enter here the hold on command and now we need to plot the energy one on the y axis against boundaries with black markers, squares with decay notation and no line with s. So here the black markers is specified with the K and the squares is specified with the S. So now we, let's just add here a section break for presentation. Let's use the hold O command as we've said. Okay, this command allows us to keep ourselves in the same plot as before. So we will keep ourselves in this plot that we have written. And now let's plot the boundaries in the X axis, energy one on the y-axis, okay, as they specify here, with the black markers and squares, and no line at all. So here we just write KS, like that, okay, and this will basically plot a graph inside this same graph that we are working now. Let's run this command, and now as we see, we have here these markers with the color of black, with squares, which is basically this that we see in these positions, because we have used the hold old command, this hold on allows us to plot graphs, okay, uh, above graphs that we have already defined before. So we can just here have a sequence of graphs drawing in the same picture. This is very useful when comparing functions. Uh, if I want to see if a function, okay, grows faster than another, okay, or a function decreases faster than other functions, then we can make this comparison very easily, having all the drawings inside one plot. As a consequence of the existence of the hold on command, we also have in MATLAB the hold off. This command allows us to stop drawing pictures into this same plot. So the next plot that we execute is going to be drawn in another picture. So here they specify that we need to use the hold of command. So we just write, these are basically sequence of follow-up exercise and workouts with the lection. So we just say here, let's add a section break. Okay, we just erase this and we add a section break in here and we just write, for instance, hold off in here, okay, like that, and now we run. Nothing is going to be plotted, we just are going to make sure that the next plot that we execute is going to be in another picture. Now, up until now, we've been plotting pair of vectors, or basically pair of arrays, and one relative to the other, okay? However, we can also plot one single vector. And when we are plotting this single vector in MATLAB, we use these vector values as the y-axis data, and we set the x-axis to be a data from the range from 1 to n, where n is the number of elements in this vector. So here we have a brief workout. We need to plot the vector p1 using the command shown below. So we just... Uh, define the plot of one array. Keep in mind that P1 is a is array that we have defined before. It's basically an array that has all the rows on the third column, which is basically this array in here. So if we want to plot this array, it's going to consist in a sequence of elements uh, on the range from one to four, because we have four elements, and they will have this sequence of values. Let's define it now. We just add here a plot P1, like that, and let's just run this code. Keep in mind that a new plot has been shown and it's not going to be a plot inside the other picture, but another one because we have used the whole of command, very important. So as we've said, we have how many uh, images we have here? Well, we have one, two, three, four, because the size of this vector P1, the length is four. So we have from one to four, and the values is basically the values that we have on the vector. As we see, it is very easy. There's also the possibility of specifying the line width when we are plotting a vector. So we can make our line to be thicker or less thick. 
Here we see an example that we plot, for instance, the array y with a line width of 5. The greater the, life, the line width, the thicker is going to be the line. So let's define now the array or plot this array with a line width of 3. This same array p1. So let's add here a section break. And now let's plot this p1 with a line width of 3, like that. And let's run this command, okay, and see the difference between this plot and the plot that we're going to generate now. So, as we see, a new plot has been displayed, and this is the plot that we have p1 with a line width of 3. So we see that we have a thicker line than this other plot. Very interesting when working with many, many functions. This allows us to visualize better one functions than others or basically establish the importance of some functions over others. And in the same way, when we are plotting two arrays, we can specify this line width. So now we have a little workout. To conclude this, we need to plot on the y-axis the p1 vector relative to the boundaries, which is going to be on the x-axis, with circular red markers and the line width of 4. So here we have a circular with the O notation and the red markers with the R notation. And then the line width we can specify as we've just done. So let's add now a new section break. And let's just specify the plot of the boundaries on the P1. And now we specify that we want the red color, okay, with circular markers. And then we specify the line width. This line width is 4. So here we just write 4, like that. So now when we press this run button, the command is executed and we see this plot, which is basically the plot of P1 relative to boundaries with the red and circular markers. And also we have a line width of 4. So it is a much more thicker lines width, or we basically say that the markers have more thickness because we see here, for instance, these other markers, okay, they are not thick at all. And here we can visualize much more these points. So all these options and arguments are very important when working with plotting, arrays, and general plots in MATLAB. With this, we finish the lesson on plotting arrays. In the next lesson, we will keep working with plotting in MATLAB.